How's it going, everybody? I'm Sam Agnew. I'm a developer evangelist for a company called Twilio. I'm super stoked to be speaking for Local Hack Day. Um, today, I'm going to be talking to you about React.js. Um, so as you see here, React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. Um, and uh, a lot of people think of it as the V in MVC, if you're familiar with like the model view controller pattern. It's just your view. So a lot of times, React is just really good for um, you telling how to render your data and then how to maintain the state of your data. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you any slides or anything. I'm just gonna walk you through this with some uh, some code. So we're gonna we're gonna build a React app together um, over this stream. Um, one note before we get started is that I have a GitHub repository. If you go to GitHub.com/sagnew/call-status-dashboard, this is a uh, I'm gonna be playing around with this at some point in my during my post. Um, if you go here, you can see some of the code that I'm writing. Um, it's not like like line for line exactly the same, but it's generally the same stuff. And I have links to some blog posts that could uh, help you get started. Um, so anyway, let me hop over to my terminal and uh, start building a React app. So we're going to use this thing called JSPM. I'm going to init a thing. Um, so JSPM is a JavaScript package manager, as if JavaScript needs more package managers. I'm just going to blow through all this. Um, it plays really well with NPM. It lets you install packages for uh, front-end development and everything, and it, it just it just works. It's pretty beautiful. Um, over here, it's asking me which ES6 transpiler I'm going to use. I'm going to go with the default Babel. Um, and what that means is I'm going to be writing some ES6-style code, which is the new 2015 spec of JavaScript, the language. Um, and there's not a ton of browser compatibility for ES6 yet, so we're using Babel to compile my ES6 code into browser-compatible uh, ES5 code. So now that I have that taken care of, I have some uh, I have some stuff in this directory now. Um, you can see this config.js file has my transpiler and uh, a lot of other stuff. You see it has like npm and GitHub registries. So that's cool. Um, next, I'm just gonna JSPM install React because that's what we're going to be using, um, and it just installs it nice and neatly. Uh, I'm also gonna install the React DOM. So React updated, like, I'm sorry, I have to type in install. React updated, like, two days ago or whatever. There's a new version of React out, um, and now you have to use this new React DOM thing. They, they kind of paired those off into two separate packages. Uh, I'll explain more what the, what the React DOM actually does uh, when we get around to it in the code, but for now I'm just installing that. Cool. So... First things first, I'm going to have to write some HTML because we're doing some front-end stuffs. So I'm going to generate uh, some HTML right here, and uh, I'm going to give it a title. And let's say the title is Hello Local Hack Day, LHD for short. Um, and in here, I'm just going to import some, uh, some basic JavaScript files. Uh, so the first thing I have to do is go to my JSPM packages folders and import system.js. That just gives us like a future API of being able to import other stuff uh, that makes our lives easier. I'm also going to import my config.js, which takes care of uh, source mapping and all that stuff. So because we're using ES6 type code and we're using Babel to compile it, when we have an error on the browser side of things, it'll actually show us the error in our uh, ES6 code instead of our like generated compiled code. Uh, next. I'm just going to um, write a really quick script to import the app that I'm going to be working on. So I'm going to be calling system.import, and I'm going to give it a. I'm going to make a JS directory, and I'm going to import my app.js file. Um, that doesn't exist yet, but we'll get around to it. Uh, so that's all I need here. I'm just going to also real quick make a div for. Uh, with the ID of app so that I will let my React app mount onto it to render my data to that element. Um, cool. So now that HTML is taken care of, let me actually make this JavaScript directory. And I'm going to open up an app.js file. So here's where we're going to build our first React component. Um, so React is component-based. And what that means is you build components, and they can compose of each other and do a bunch of cool things. 
Um, but you pretty much build your components and tell it how to render your data and what to do with your data. Um, so first things first, I'm going to have to import React from the React package. Um, for those of you who have written Python before, this will look like the reverse of like a Python import statement. It's pretty cool. It's a new ES6 style imports. Next, I'm going to import the React DOM, which is a like couple days old. This is the new package I was talking about. Um, this pretty much allows us to render React elements to HTML elements. Um, so next, let me just create a React class. I'm going to say, I'm going to call it app, and it's going to extend react.component. Um, this might look a little scary to JavaScript developers. Uh, it looks scary to me because, you know, we don't deal with a lot of traditional object-oriented programming type stuff. We do, like, prototypal inheritance and all that stuff, which is, like, super cool. But don't worry, this isn't Java. This is just, this is just me defining a prototype object, and it's just kind of syntactic sugar syntactic sugar around that. Um, so in here, I'm going to def give it a constructor method, which seems similar to uh, object-oriented programming. Um, it'll take a props, and I'm just going to call the supers constructor on those props. So this will give my, the properties of this React component. It'll pass those to react.component to create a React class. And next, the main thing I'm going to have to do is uh, define what this component will render. So I'm going to return some stuff right here that's going to look a little strange at first. Um, so Facebook developed React, and with React they developed a, an extension to the JavaScript language called JSX. And what JSX is, is pretty much, it looks like inline HTML, but really it just makes it easier for you to, to define how your React components look when they're rendered. So for instance, I'm going to make a div, and that div will just have like an h1 tag that will say, hello, local hack day. And this is what my React component will, will return. It'll just have that. Um, this looks like inline HTML, but it's just JSX. Um, next, I'm going to have to call React DOM dot render. So this is me calling the DOM, the React DOM. Uh, what, what the React DOM is, it is a uh, React keeps track of your document object model as you add stuff and change the data around in your components. So um, this uh, this is pretty neat because um, when you're when you're doing a lot of JavaScript and you're making a lot of DOM manipulations, usually the bottleneck when it comes to speed comes to like the browser re-rendering the DOM. Um, but and it's not actually your JavaScript code that's usually slowing things down. So what's cool about this is that the React DOM keeps track of the document object model in your browser, and when you when you call it to render, it'll only um, it'll only render the things that need to be changed. So it'll do a diff between the React DOM and uh, the, uh, the real document object model. So anyway, React DOM dot render takes um, a React component and renders it to an HTML element, a DOM element. Um, and I'm going to just get element by ID. And I'm going to get my app element that I think I made in my HTML. Um, now that that's taken care of, this stuff should just work because JSPM is pretty nice. So yeah, so I can go over here. I'm, I'm serving all of my um, my code on uh, port 8000 on my local host so I can just have like static files accessible. Uh, so here I have my index.html and you see at, at my React component is just rendering hello local hack day. And if we look at the console, I'm uh, not getting any errors. So that's, that's pretty nice. Um, but you know that's not that's not that cool, right? You know I'm just doing a hello world stuff. That just shows you that you can render text, and you know people have been rendering text for a long time. So we're gonna do something cooler. Um, right now I'm gonna show you how React components contain state. So in the constructor I'm gonna set the state of this component, and the state is going to have an object that just has text, and that text is gonna be hello LHD. I'll say LHD because it's different than local hack day, just to prove that stuff on the page changes. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give this, instead of uh, rendering a straight string of text, I'm going to have it render, I'm going to access the state, and I'm going to have it render the text in that state object. Um, and this right here, these uh, curly brackets, just kind of represent that I'm embedding some JavaScript code in my uh, JSX. Um, it's kind of like using a template if you've ever used like EJS or Jade or any of that stuff. Um, so anyway, I should go over here and it should change to hello LHD. Awesome. So you see that now I'm not just giving it a direct um, text to render. I'm giving it 
the text from the state. So now that that's taken care of, let me show you how uh, React components can compose each other and you can have a parent and child relationship between components. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, I'm going to create another React class, and uh, what, my goal for this is to show you that we can do two-way data binding between React components. Um, so I'm going to have a text box underneath this header, this header text that will contain the same text in, from the React component state, and will allow you to type in the text box and change it. So first things first, I'm going to make a new class, and I'll just call it Edit Box, and it's going to extend React.component once again. I'm going to give it a constructor. This constructor will take some props, and I will call the super on those props, just uh, some boilerplate type stuff. Um, next, I'm going to define a render method, and this render method will return some more JSX, but this time I'm going to uh, I'm going to give it so I'm going to give it this h1 tag that'll have uh, this dot props dot text. So I'm, I'm passing the text down as a property from the parent who has the text as its state. I'm passing that down as a property to this, this child component that will be inside my parent component, and I'm displaying it here. But let me also, let me also do, uh, make an input box right here. Um, it'll be type equals text. Um, and it will have the value of uh, the same thing that's in the header. So this dot props dot text. So what this is going to do is it's going to create a read only React component, or not? Uh, it's going to create a read only element because React will not let you edit this because it already has a value. Um, so the way this usually usually handle this is the the parent component will have an app delegator that that has um, that handles all the event listeners for all of it for the child components. Um, so, because we didn't define what happens when the data in that box changes, it's not going to let us change the text in the text box. Um, so, first things first, I'm going to take this out, and instead of returning the hello world stuff, I'm going to have this render an edit box component. So, and in here, I'm going to pass the I'm going to pass the um, text down as the state's text, and uh, that will be passed as a property, which is why I can, uh, over here, access it through the props. So now that's happening, uh, I think we should be good to go to see a text box on the page that we cannot write to. Cool, so I'm, I'm typing, I don't know if you can see, but I am typing in here, and it's not changing anything in the text box, we've created a read-only element, and down here you see that I have a warning in my JavaScript console that's like, yo, you need to like define what happens when you want to change this data, otherwise it's going to be like, hello, LHD, in a text box. And that's not very useful. But, uh, as an example of some cool stuff we can do, so anyway, I'm going to define a callback function on this uh, React component, my app component, that will be called whenever the text in that text box from our child component gets changed. Um, and let's just call this onChangeCB, and it will take an event, the event that gets emitted whenever um, the on change for that text box is called. And all this is going to do is change the state of our of our component to make it so that uh, the text equals the events v target value. So this is this is the value of the text in the text box. So that's you know one line function just gonna just gonna change the state here, and uh, over here we have to pass this down to our child component. So I'm going to say onChangeCB equals this dot onChangeCB. So what I'm doing is I'm passing this callback function to my child component so that I can access it there. Uh, but one quick thing I have to do up here is I have to bind this callback function to um, I have to bind the this scope to it just because uh, ES6 stuff. Um, so anyway, now that that's taken care of, um, I have to go back here and uh, pass it to this uh, text box. So I'm going to say on change, 
And whenever whenever an on change event is fired, it's gonna call, it's gonna access the properties, and it's gonna access the on change CB um, callback function that I just defined. And uh, hopefully with that, we'll be able to write to this React component. So let's see. I see I'm getting this uh, this error over here, and I think that's because I forgot to bind this callback. I just kind of set it, but forgot to type it. So there we go. Um, now that that's taken care of, we should have a text box, and we should be able to type in this text box. Yo, local hack day rules. Cool. So what we're doing is we're not actually typing in this text box. We're firing an on change event in the uh, child component that is delegating up to the parent component and calling this callback function, changing the state of the parent component, and then re-rendering and sending down the new state as a property of the child component, which is rendering that right here. And that's all happening like, looks like I'm doing it pretty much instantly, right? Cool. So you see that we can do two-way data binding in React and that, um, you know, it's rel relatively simple to get going. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to add React onto an already existing project because this is not like real world stuff, right? This is just us toying around with um, the basics of React. But now that you understand how components work and all that stuff, we should be able to um, add this onto another thing. So over here, I'm going to go to this GitHub repo that I pointed out at the beginning, um, github.com slash sagnew slash call status dashboard. Um, and this is pretty much some code I was working on for a blog post that I was writing for the Twilio blog. Um, and, I, and I have like links to posts in here that'll tell you how to get started with stuff. So like over here, this is a this is a post I wrote about how to get set up with um to get set up with React to work with Babel to transpile to ES6 using a, a tool called Webpack. So a lot of times um you can use a tool called Webpack to bundle up all of your JavaScript modules and just give them to your to your HTML in like one big minified bundle. Um, and that's pretty cool because it, it means you don't have to like do a bunch of script tags manually. Uh, JSPM kind of handles a lot of this stuff for you, but Webpack is designed to be like a like a have more real world usage. So for the next half of this workshop, I'm going to be using Webpack instead of JSPM. And uh, over here, I have a post about monitoring phone calls with uh, on your Express app. So like just a use case of this is if if you're if you're having like some phone calls sent with the Twilio API, it'll give you It'll send their HTTP request to a callback URL that you give it whenever the state of that phone call changes. And that's a perfect example of like rendering stuff to the page when your data state changes. So I'm going to clone this URL, and we're going to add a front end onto this project, which currently is just an express app that uses socket.io to, um, to pass data between the client and the server. So first things first, I'm going to npm install. Um, and I believe that in this project, uh, I'm using an older version of React. And by older, I mean from like like four days ago instead of three days ago before the, the update happened. So I'm not going to have to use React DOM to render stuff. I'm just going to be able to call react.render. Um, and uh, so I'm waiting for everything to npm install. Um, and while that's happening, we just uh, make sure I have everything taken care of. OK, cool. So everything's npm installing. Um, this is going to install like Express and Twilio and Socket.io and all that stuff. And uh, you see I have, I have stuff here. I'm just going to real quick remove everything from the static folder because I committed some of the code for this talk to this earlier so that you all can go to the repo and just look at the code I'm going to write. Um, so now I have all my front end JavaScript not there anymore. Uh, let me look at our Webpack config because we're going to be using Webpack to bundle everything, like I said. Here's where we define how everything happens. So this entry point right here is going to be my bundle entry.js file. And that that's really just going to be where, where you define this compilation pipeline to start. So in this bundle entry, I'm just going to import my React components, and it's going to go through all their dependencies and just bundle it up into one file that I'll give to my uh, HTML. And that's what this output is, static slash bundle.js. And over here, I have my loaders defined. And you see that for JS and JSX files, I'm using the Babel loader, which will, um, which will take care of uh, my ES6 JavaScript to ES5 JavaScript, as well as compiling the JSX stuff. So 
now that I've shown you that, let me uh, let me go over to my index.js. So this is this is the Express server that we're going to be adding on to. Um, I'm not going to be writing much server side code. I think the only thing I'm going to do is change it to instead of saying in a robot voice, I'm going to have it play Giles theme over the phone real quick as an example. So I'm going to give it a link to uh, an MP3 file on my server that will play Giles theme. And uh, that's just what's going to happen whenever I call a phone number that I bought earlier. Um, so over here is my events route. As you can see, this all this does is it's, it's a callback URL that will receive a request whenever the status of a phone call changes. And it's um, emitting with Socket.io, it's emitting a status update event to the client. So when the client Socket receives a status update event, it will get this object with uh, all that data. So now that that's taken care of, I can get to writing some uh, some front end code. Um, so I'm going to make a React component that will define the, how the data is rendered for a phone call. Um, and again, I'm just going to have to import React from the React package. And I also I already have socket.io. I'm going to include that in my index.html. So I'm going to declare a socket and this socket will allow me to uh, receive events from the server. So now I'm going to make a class for this phone call component, and it's going to extend react.component. So now I'm going to define a constructor for this phone call react class, and it's going to take props again. I'm going to call the super constructor on props, and um, then I pretty much I have to define a render function for this, so um, in here I'm just going to return a. I'm just going to return, um, let's say, a div that will contain an li, like a list item, um, because I'm going to have ideally I'm going to have a list of all of the phone calls that will be on the page uh, that are active, and I'm going to wrap this. In, a, in an li, and inside that, I'm just going to have a, I'm just going to have some text that will display all of the properties that you saw in my events route on my Express server. So, so the first thing I need to do is um, I'm going to say the call SID, which is kind of like a a unique identifier for the call that will access the call SID uh, variable in the props. And then I'm going to do the call status. So this is going to be the status of the call, which will probably be uh, just completed because I'm going to be sending a phone call to this number. And then I'm going to access the number that it was sent to. Normally I would do the number that it was sent from, but because this is not like a live audience in front of me calling this number, I'm not going to display just my phone number on the screen. You know, if you, if you want to get my phone number, you can... Uh, you can tweet at me. Maybe maybe I'll uh, message it to you. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't want people to spam me. So this is this is how we're gonna render our React component. And I actually just realized, let's get rid of this socket IO stuff for now. I'm gonna do that in the parent component because we're gonna make a parent component to hold all these phone calls. So now I'm gonna call React dot render, and I'm going to give it a phone call component. And I'm going to give it a, just some dummy data for now. So that's going to be the phone number. The call SID will be some letters. And then the status will be completed. So now that, now that we have this rendered, I should be able to go over to my other terminal and run Webpack. So I'm going to go to this call status dashboard. And you see my Webpack config is already there, so I just need to run Webpack, and I'm going to give it the watch flag so that it'll just continuously uh, recompile all of my stuff. Oh, and I see here I did not define the entry point yet, so I'm going to go to my bundle entry.js, which is what I what you saw me define in uh, in my Webpack config, and this is where I give it the uh, the entry point to my front side, my front end app. So now you see it compiled everything, 158 modules, even though you saw me write one. It's a lot of dependencies. And now I'm going to go over to localhost port 3000. But before I do that, i got to actually run my node server. So let me run that server. I'll go to port 3000. 
and I'll get an error. Container is not a DOM element. Okay. So in my in my stupor of typing things, I forgot to give it an element to mount to. So I'm gonna give it a give it a div, give it the app div on my index.html. But let me make sure first that I have that. All right, so I have something called hello. So I must have been using this for like a hello world example at one point. So over here, I have my bundle.js that's, that's just in my HTML, and I have the CDN to socket.io that we'll be using later. Um, so now if I go over to my web page, I see this React component just rendering with uh, the dummy data that I gave it. So now that I have uh, this stuff imported, I'm going to create a class for this container object. So my phone call box object will also extend react.component. And I'm going to create a constructor that will take all the properties once again. Even though I don't think I'm going to be passing properties to this one, I'm just going to do that anyway in case I want to add on to it later. And then I'm going to define the state. So here I'm going to give it a, an empty array called phone calls that will hold all of the uh, the uh, components from our other other file. This will hold all of the calls that we are keeping track of the state of. And uh, what I want to do is whenever I get a status update event from uh, from the server, I want to uh, I want to make sure that I do something with that and update my phone calls array. So I'm going to have socket.on. I'm going to listen to status update events. And whenever that's called, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a function real quick. I'm going to do it on status update. That's what I'm going to give it. But let me say it's going to take a new call state. That's just what I'm going to call the object that it gets. Um, over here. I'm going to define a function. This is a this is a ES6 style arrow function. So you see, like this arrow binds the this of the outside scope to the scope of this function. But really, all I'm doing is a one line function calling our our uh, on status update function that I'm about to write right now. So I don't really need to put curly braces and all that stuff. Um, so I'm going to define this on status update callback, and it's going to take a call state. And now my goal here is I'm going to loop through all of the phone calls that we have, and I'm going to uh, if 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 the call is already in the array, judging by the the call SID, which is the unique identifier, if it's already in the array, then I'm going to update it. But if it's not in the array, I'm going to add this new call state object to it. So first, let me define a variable called is new call, and I'm going to start that off to be true because we're optimistic and we're going to assume there's a new phone call because we want to think that we have lots of friends. Um, so now I'm going to map the phone calls in our state to a new uh, new array. So I'm going to go through this uh, this uh, phone calls array, and I'm going to return a new call for each one. So I'm going to going to give my map function another callback function that will. Um, I have to don't forget the arrow. Cool. So this uh, this function is pretty much going to either return the previous call or the new call state object, depending on if, uh, if the call is in the array or not. So let me make some checks real quick. Um, wrong, uh, wrong bracket. Cool. So let me make a check to see if, if um, the calls call SID is equal to the new call state object's call SID. And if that's true, then we know that this is not a new call because this is already in our array. And we know that we're just going to return um, the new call state because we're updating that. And this, this will be mapped to an element in our phone calls array. So now if, that's a, if, if, it's, if the opposite is true, then we're just going to return the call because we don't need to update it. And uh, now that's taken care of, I want to... Uh, I want to make sure that I that I'm adding uh, the new call if if there is a new call. So I'm going to say if is new call, then I'm going to just push this uh, new call state object onto my array. 
And uh, last but not least, I actually have to update the state. So I'm going to call the, the set state function that will take our phone calls array. Because if I forget to do that, then we're going to be debugging for a while until I realize that I forgot. All right, cool. So now, now that's taken care of. I didn't actually define a render method yet. So let's get on to that. So now that, now that I have all that done, I'm going to render. And what I'm going to do is gonna, I'm going to have these phone calls again. I'm going to map the phone calls from our state to a new object just so I can wrap them in uh, the phone call React component, which I just realized I forgot to import. So I'm going to import that right now. I'm going to import that from uh, from that uh, JavaScript file, from that JSX file. Um, so now that I have that taken care of, I'm going to, for each phone call, return some JSX. That will pretty much be this uh, this this object, but with the props. So it'll be call.2, um, the call status will be calls call status, and then uh, what else is there? Call sid. I have to give it the, uh, so I'm pretty much just taking the variables from this, from this object and just wrapping them in a React component. So now that I have those phone calls in an array, I'm going to return some more JSX. And all I'm going to do here is uh, let me give it a div with this ID. And inside that div, I'm just going to have some text that will be like, phone calls, woo. And then I'm going to just render straight up this list of calls. But I'm going to do it in reverse just because uh, I want to display the, the newest ones first. Um, not, not that I'm uh, going to have a lot of people calling me because... It's just me for now. But anyway, now that's taken care of, I want to make another call to react.render. I'm going to give it my phone call box object. And I'm going to have that render to that app element that you saw from before. Got to close my string, though. Can't forget that. Um, cool. Now I see I'm importing this. I forgot to export, and I also have to get rid of React.render because I'm not rendering these phone calls by themselves anymore. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to export this phone call object before I forget. And uh, with that said, I should be good to go. I'm going to uh, check to see if my, my stuff compiled. So you see I have 158 modules just as before, which means I need to update my uh, entry point. So I'm going to update that to have a, to import my new phone call box object. Cool. Now you see 159 modules because I added one. Awesome. So now this now that this is taken care of, cool. I have just a screen that says phone calls, and here's where the fun starts. I'm going to pull my phone out, and I'm going to call a number that I that I bought with Twilio earlier. And when the phone is when the call is over, it should update my React components, it should send a, a request to my Express server and my slash events route, which will emit an event with socket.io, which will then be picked up by my phone call box object, which will update the state of that component, and then render it down into the child component. So real quick, I'm going to make this phone call and hopefully hear some jamming tunes. Guile Steam. I love Guile Steam because Guile's the man. But now when I hang up, I should see some stuff display on the page, unless I totally messed up my code. Oh man, nothing rendered. Look at that. So let me do some uh, some beautiful debugging in here real quick. Um, I'm going to log this new call state object real quick just to make sure stuff is happening. And I'm going to send this call again real quick just to see what's going on here. Because we probably forgot something small somewhere. Cool. So it looks like we're getting the object. Did I forget to set the state, though? 
Uh, here we go. So when I'm setting the state, I forgot to wrap this in an object once again. So the phone calls should be set in that state. Uh, now I should call it and get the epic guile steam that you've already heard. Awesome. Now when I hang up, it should display on the page. Cool. So you see that uh, this is all happening in real time. React is rendering the data as my data changes. I'm going to send another call. And it's going to re render another one. I'm going to do one more because, like, you know, three is the coolest number. Um, I'm going to hang up again. And cool. So you see that this is, this is all happening in real time. These, are, these calls are all getting uh, rendered to whenever I call this number on my phone and complete the call. The state of the call changes, and it gets sent to my React app to display. So again, if you want to if you want to check this code out, you can just go to my GitHub, GitHub.com slash sagnu slash call status dashboard. And, and if you want me to explain everything, I have these posts about setting up React as I went through before, and I have this post about monitoring call progress events. If you want to be able to build the uh, server side portion of this that I didn't cover, uh, again, I'm Sam Agnew from Twilio. Uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, be here for Local Hack Day.